Well, I, I don't have a lot to say. I, you know, as a statement because I really don't know much. We're going into a year in which last year we scored 2,540 points. I think the number was, and we have just over 200 points back. I've never, never in my life have I been associated with something like that. It's the first time in my 35 years as a head coach that I haven't had a kid on the preseason all-league team. Even my first year here when we took over the job, I inherited a young man named Chris House who was one of the best players in the league. So he was you know, a preseason all-league player. And uh, it's the first time. And you think about that. that that's you know, 34 years in a row of having that and not having it. Uh, so there's real question marks. Um, and I, don't, I really don't know what's going to happen. I, I know this. We don't. We don't have an NBA level player right now or NBA ready level player right now, so practices look different because for the last six, seven years we've had one. You know, with, with Kendrick playing in for Golden State in the preseason this year, it gives us our fourth guy in the NBA in the last 12 years. So, you know, it's been a long time since I've walked into practice and not had that elite, elite player. That doesn't mean, though, that we can't be real good, and that doesn't mean that we're that I don't have really good players. It's just different for me. I don't know. I don't know who's going to take the Robin cape off and put the Batman cape on and it, until the lights come on and you're playing games. We won't know. So in in some ways it's exciting, and in some ways it's nerve-wracking. Questions? Well, what needs to happen then for you guys to get to where you know, your ultimate goals are? Well, I need to see us play and not against each other. So uh, we've had three inner, we've had three inner squad scrimmages and we've played, we've shot the ball extremely well. In our last inner squad scrimmage, both teams combined were 18 of 40 from the three. Now my question is, does that mean we're really good shooters or does that mean we're so bad on defense that we're giving up easy shots? I don't know that. And until we play a couple times, I won't know. I'm, I'm very concerned about us defensively. Anytime you have a young team with players that haven't played, um, you're, there's great concerns defensively, and I'm really, really concerned about that. I'm concerned about how we guard the ball one-on-one. -on -one. I, I believe we're going to be a very, very good rebounding team, which has been our Achilles heel the last couple of years. We used to be a really great rebounding team the last couple of years. I think we'll be a really good free-throw shooting team again, but we always are that. Um, I don't know about who's, you know, who's going to have the ball with the game on the line. Who's going to step up? Who's going to do those things? I just don't know. I, and normally in this case, you, you know, I can remember a couple years ago we lost a bunch of players, and I made a statement in this in this press conference that ah, somebody always averages 18 or 24, and that's always the case. But I can't look out there this year and, and say he's going to do that. I, I don't know. Do you, do you expect some of that rebounding to come from Brad? Brad well, I think we have great size, and we have great length, and we have good athleticism, and I think we have some toughness to us, and those are the qualities of rebounding. Um, Brad is 6'11", Jordan Nobles is 6'9", um, Xavier is 6'7", Beck is 6'7", Babatune is 6'11", 6'10", maybe. So we have great size. Um, and Brad, you don't say Brad's a really good athlete, but he's long. And, I mean, he can reach over people, and he, he, he can do some really good things in the glass. I thought last year, losing him last year for the season really hurt us because that was one of our weaknesses was the ability to rebound, especially the offensive end, and, and he, he's our best guy at that. So, yeah, I think that'll help. And I think Xavier's bulk and Babatune's bulk and – uh, Jordan is really athletic and long and can sneak in there and, and do some great things. So we've got a bunch of guys that can rebound the basketball. Other than his obvious size, what's Baba Tunde brought to the team so far? Um, <clears throat> he's a really good kid who's never played this game. He, he hasn't been coached. He's just He just started playing it a couple years ago. He's been a soccer player. And... It's, it's refreshing to see a young man improve so much. I mean, he's a long way away, but if you would have seen him when he got here versus to where he is today, you'd just be amazed at the progress he's making. And, and when he does things, I mean, just in even terminology that you just would expect to know, he didn't know terminology. 
I didn't know what an elbow was. You know, I mean, so it's been kind of refreshing and funny, and, and it's, he's, he's been really, he's such a good kid, you know. Uh, he was the valedictorian of his class and all that kind of stuff, so he's just, he's a super kid, and his growth and, and watching him over the next four years is going to be really kind of special. Do you expect, you have a local kid, Trey, from Novi, mm -hmm. he's a multi-sport athlete, do you expect he'll be able to contribute early, or um, is it? <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, from a talent standpoint, I would, I can honestly say to you that from a talent standpoint, as an incoming freshman, he's right at the highest level I've ever had. He's really, really talented. 6'5", six, 6'4", six, long, athletic, uh, is really an outstanding shooter. Um, he could become a really good defender. He's got to get a little stronger. Uh, but, you know, he's a little wayward and a little bit lackadaisical, and he's a typical freshman. Nah, he's, he's, he's not even a typical freshman. He's on the other side of that line. Um, he, he's just... And I want to be careful because I don't want to make it look like, you know, he's got issues. He doesn't have issues. He's just got to learn how to play hard. He's just got, you know, he's, he's his whole life he's just been better than everybody and he can float through things and, and that isn't the case right now. And, and I'm not real good with that stuff. And he and I are a little bit at odds every day with that. And what is playing hard? What does that mean? What is consistency? You know, coming out here and, and putting the work in to become a consistent shooter, a great shooter, because he's got the tools to be. He's got the tools to be uh, one of the best players that, that ever came through here. He's also got the mindset right now to be somebody that never plays. So, you know, he and I are going to clash a little bit probably. But does it, does really it help talented. that he is such a? He could have gone somewhere in foot to play football. Yeah, he was. He had high major offers in football. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that help his basketball? Well, he's athletic and he's got great because he's a receiver. He's got great hands, you know. And he, 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 you know, a route runner, and he's supposed to be an understanding and that. But he hasn't really taken on to what we're trying to accomplish here, and and, uh, and he will. I mean, I I believe he will. I think he's going to be an unbelievable player at Oakland. But uh, I don't, I don't. You know, a lot of times when you have a freshman like that that's highly touted like he was and then the first four games he doesn't play much, people think something's wrong. And it's just he's a freshman, has got to learn. That's all. He's got a chance to be special. Who do you want to see take the reins on a leadership? <clears throat> well, our captains are um, <coughs> Xavier, Brad Brechting, and Jalen Cumberland. So they're four-year, fourth-year juniors. And they've worn Robin capes their whole career here. And one of them, maybe two of them, have got to really step forward. If we're going to, I saw somewhere where we're picked eighth. You know, Oakland's never been eighth. I mean, we don't, we're never, we're always in the top. And I don't believe we're going to be eighth. But for us to not be, those guys are going to have to play really well. They're going to have to be the guys that lead us. We can't. We can't depend on freshmen. And my freshman class is really good. We we had an inter squad scrimmage last week where the three of the freshmen were on one team and they were leading at halftime. So those those freshmen are going to be really good players. But you're not going to win with at our level. You don't win with multiple freshmen. Are you surprised at all where the predictions have come in with you guys? No, I. I, I I'm not surprised. I'm a little, you know, like, why would anybody think we're going to be eighth? You know, we've been in Division One for a long, long time, and I think we finished seventh one, one year, a few years ago, and we had a bunch of injuries. Um, but we've all, I mean, first, second, third, fourth, we're always in the, in the mix, so why would somebody think? So that's kind of, you know, Gives you a little bit of a motivation to, to, to do something. But the reality of it is, is it's a whole new team, and those kids don't care what we've been. We've got to be what we are. And uh, so it's not, it's, it's not something we've really talked about. I think I might have mentioned it one time just to see how they reacted to it. You think it's good, though, that you don't have those <clears throat> expectations this year? No. No, I want it. I want every. Would you rather be the New England Patriots or the Detroit Lions? <laughs> huh? I want to be the Patriots, right? I want to step on the floor or in 
and every time that you know when when teams walk into the arena they know they don't win here when they play Oakland they know that if they win it's a big deal and uh, you know it used to be that way and you know we had a, a very disappointing year last year you can point fingers at injuries but don't nobody remember I mean we lost five guys for the season I mean but nobody's gonna look back at that just gonna look back and say well, we had a team that probably could have won 30 games last year and we won 19. So, uh, you know, a lot of, some teams beat us that hadn't beaten us. And uh, so we've got to get back to that. So it may take some time, but we will. Coach, you talked about the fact that you don't have that quote unquote NBA guy with the offense. Are you going to offensively, how does that change what you do? Is it maybe a throwback to, to what you maybe did 15 years ago, 20 years ago? Well, we've, we've completely revamped everything. We completely revamped our offense. We've completely revamped our defense. And we've done it for two reasons. Number one is personnel. And number two is, you know, we've been one of the top scoring teams in the country for the last decade playing a certain way. And I thought the last couple of years, even with the talented players we had, we, start, we were getting a little stale with it. And when I stale, I mean, too comfortable with it, cutting corners. Um, and I think teams now could prepare for us. You know, well, we ran that same play for the last seven years. We ran it for Kay Felby, then we ran it for, you know, for Kendrick Nunn. So we completely scrapped everything that we've done the last decade and gone back to the Jason Rosicki, Brad Buddenborg era of offense where we run, we're going to run motion. We're going to be a motion team. In years gone past, motion was the Vogue offense. Everybody did it, and we got away from it because everybody did it. And we went to uh, we went to our dribble drive and set plays in that. Now the whole landscape is ball screen offense, uh, ball screen motion offense, um, and it's gotten away from pure motion. So we've kind of flipped that back to the old days, and we're going to be one of the few pure motion teams in the country and that, that may make us a little harder prep and it's just we needed a change we needed to get away and re reboot and restart the engines offensively so that's why we're doing it defensively we've changed because of our personnel we don't have a rim protector with isaiah leaving we, we don't have one brad is 6 11 but he's you know nowhere in his dna is he a rim protector so we're just going to guard a little bit differently. We're going to push out farther. We're going to pressure the ball more than we have. Um, we're going to pick up full court. We have. We don't know what our rotation is, so early in the year we're going to try and play nine or ten guys to find it out. So we're going to push up the floor and, and try and wear people out a little bit with some pressure. Does that excite you? Uh, no, it's it's survival. You know, you've got to do what you got to do to win. I mean, I. You just, you know at Duke or Michigan State or Carolina, you can just go about and play a style and recruit those players. And here we can't do that because we want to win every year. We don't. It's unacceptable to us to not be competing for a championship every year. If we don't compete for the championship this year, that's unacceptable. We don't do that at Oakland. We compete for championships every year. So to be picked eighth or whatever, yeah, it's, we don't believe in that. And so we do, as a coaching staff, we do what we have to do to try and win. It sounds like there's so much you're unsure of about this team. Do you know who like your five starters are come November no. 9th? No. Well, I'll know by then because of these two exhibition games. You know, we're going to start big tonight. We're going to start, uh, well, no, Brad's not going to start. <coughs> not as big as we can be, but we're going to go with our length and athleticism tonight. And we'll see how that goes. We're going with Xavier, uh, um, Beck, Jordan Nobles, Cumberland, and uh, Braylon. Do you normally know by this time each year who you're I normally are? know when the season ends the year before. I mean, last year we knew. I mean, you know, yeah, you usually know, and then you hope somebody comes into camp and beats somebody out or moves somebody around. And, uh, you know, this year I told them the first day of camp, I have no idea. You know, every, every day is important. Every practice was important this, this preseason. What do you think will be the best possible outcome for you this season? With the, the best possible outcome yeah. for us would be 40 and 0 and win the national championship. 
realist, like with forty and one win the national championship. That's what we tried to do. Obviously, you don't believe we can do that. I think it's going to be an interesting year to see the up and comers becoming the forty and team national championship. Uh, good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? 